Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee for Tuesday evening, December 10th, 2019. Welcome to the viewers at home on Channel 22 and those here this evening. As a reminder, you can watch the replay of tonight's meeting anytime starting tomorrow morning, going to the Town, town of Hampton website, scrolling down to where it says Watch Channel 22, and then you can virtually watch any of the meetings starting with the Budget Committee, Selectmen, on and on. So uh, I urge you all to do that, and uh, we'll really help you out as you continue to watch the meetings. I'd like to... Uh, have Mike Clough lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Starting from my far left and on TV at home to your right, I'd like members to introduce themselves. Joyce Capertis. Rusty Bridal, Selectman's Rep. Steve Henderson. Brian Warburton, Chairman. Mike Clough. Bob Land, Village District Representative. David Mara. Stephen LeBranche. And we have on our far left our great assistant, Barbara Kravitz, taking minutes this evening. Speaking of minutes, we all should have received, and they're also on the website, the review of last Tuesday's uh, minutes with the SAU 90. Hold on one second. Okay, any uh, changes on page one? Page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven. Accept the motion to accept the minutes. Moved by Mr. Plough, seconded by Mr. Henderson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. No, I'm abstaining. You abstain. Mr. Ladd abstains. Thank you. And Mrs. Brother Russell wasn't here, so. All right. Before we start our appointments for the evening, I want to, I want to again thank Fred Welch and Christy and all the management of the town for putting the budget presentations together. Uh, really great job, and I have to say I've worked with Fred uh, if not every other day, uh, pretty much in putting this schedule together with everybody concerned. It's really, really been a great team effort. Um, very busy night tonight, so I'd urge all the Budget Committee members to, as we have department heads come to the table, please refer to that section of your book. And on every single instance of departments we bring up, attached right behind it is the descriptions of the budget. And you all should have had uh, the review of those. We are going to review the town department heads in order as listed on the agenda, starting with building department. Who will be presenting for building tonight? Is Kevin here? Oh, I get to. Christy will do it. Thank you, Christy. Sorry, I forgot I was Kevin. That's all right. I'm Kevin. <laughs> Like to have Mr. Bridal uh, move the bottom line. I move the bottom line of uh, 216031. Second. Move 216031 dollars by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Anybody have any questions on the uh, building department? Hearing none, I well, we'll move that on to. Uh, number of the public hearing. I do want to thank on behalf of the Budget Committee, and I know he isn't here tonight, we certainly want to thank a gentleman of over two decades of service to this town. It actually started when we were right. uh, on the Board of Selectmen and uh, Mr. Kevin Schultz. We wish him very well and, and hopefully we'll get to see him be before the end of the year. Um, our next area is zoning. That one is $5,310. Mm, zoning Ms. is, no, I no, have no, $3,400. Oh, I'm sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. It's all right. Mr. Brito moves $3,436, seconded by Mr. Pluff. 
pretty straightforward budget includes the part-time wages for the secretary and, and pretty much supplies and actually it's a, a decrease uh, from last year we move that anybody have any questions on the zoning board library Amanda's here tonight hello Amanda You know, I used to say how much I love the library at my kids. Now I have to say I love it with my grandchildren. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite a place. What a job you guys do over there. So thank you very much. Um, accept a motion to move the bottom line. Motion to move 910-806. Moved by Mr. Bride of 910,806. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Commander, is there anything you want to say on the budget while you're here? Any, does anybody have any questions? Uh, Pretty straightforward, uh, Mr. Mara. I have a question in reference to the substitute wages. It seems to be kind of an increase from a while back, 2018. Yeah, that's line 1910 for the folks in the committee. There's a 78% increase. Uh, any? You are correct. So we cut that line several years ago just to try to balance the bottom line at some point, and it's been hurting us ever since. So that number reflects what we actually need to be able to have people take their so vacation and their, and their sixth time. We were, yes, saying? exactly. So that, that number reflects um, a, a more true estimate of what we need for part-time and, and, and uh, I have a coverage. a similar question on the bottom one, the appropriation. It's kind of going from, i just like you to explain a little bit what, what goes into that. I've got that, uh, is a 3.9% increase? Is yeah, that, what, what goes yeah. into the appropriation? Yes. So that is everything that we're spending on a day-to-day -day basis. The increases for the, for next year are an insurance policy, our HVAC maintenance contract. Um, we are part of the budget program for our gas from Unitil. The, that program is going up. Um, some of the software that we purchased, the licenses is going up, and then um, our cleaning contract is also going up. So those are the areas that are increasing for 2020. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent questions, Mr. Mar. Anybody else have any questions on our, with our library in here? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, our next department is assessing. <coughs> Mr. Brado, you want to move that yeah, number? Yeah, I will move uh, 284213. Mr. Brado moves $284,213, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, anybody, Fred, did you want to add anything to this sec? No, anybody have any questions? The uh, the contract is service right Is that because it's another? It's a full year. Wasn't there? A that's correct. That's what I thought. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, we're good in that section too. Excellent job. Thank you. Conservation. Conservation is thirty six nine eighty two. <coughs> Mr. Bridal moves 36982, seconded by Mr. Pluff. We have at the table tonight Jay Diener. Hello, Jay. How are you? Good, thank you. Anybody have any uh, questions for Jay Diener? Jay, you have any uh, comments or anything? Uh, no, I think our budget is um, pretty straightforward. Yeah, absolutely. Great job. Uh, and you guys continue to do a great job for us. Thank you, sir. We appreciate, appreciate your uh, always your great communication. I think I've shared that with you before on whatever aspect having to do with conservation in this town. I appreciate all the hard work. I, I know how many hours you put in in a month, Jay. I mean, you do so much. I'm worth every penny I get paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So. All right, our next uh, department, we want to invite up Renee with uh, Parks. Parks and Recreation. You know, when I was putting this on agenda, I realized after I just put Parks, but that we we get it. How are you, Renee? Good. How are you doing? Good. We accept the bottom uh, line, Mr. Bridal. The total for Parks and Recreation is two six one nine seven five. Moved by Mr. Bridal, two hundred sixty one thousand nine seventy five. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. I will say uh, another great budget. I mean, literally flat. I mean, two percent, but we see where it is. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not anything. Um, anything you want to add, Renee? A lot of changes, a lot of stuff you're doing uh, with the parks and the whole deal. I mean, it's 
we're doing a lot with what we got. We're yeah. uh, working hard. Yeah. How many part-time employees do you have? I have two part-time parks guys at 28 hours, and I have uh, one full-time programmer and a part-time position in the office that is 28 hours and 10 hours. It's a it hasn't changed much in 30 no. years. You don't you haven't had right, Renee. We haven't had a lot, too many more people there. So no, sir. Thank you, and I know I saw you Saturday and all the great events you put for the for the town and stuff. So anybody have any questions on the park and recreation budget? I'd just like to give a shout out to Ray for co-sponsoring one of our major events at the beach this summer, the fire show. Yes. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Renee. All right. All right, our next area is our legal section. Good evening. Good evening. Attorney Mark Gerald for the viewers at home and here. Thank you, Absolutely. Attorney Gerald. Do uh, you want to move the bottom line in the? Total uh, for legal is 184,374. Move the number 184,374 dollars, seconded by Second. Mr. Pluff. Uh, literally very little increase in the total budget here. Anybody have any questions or comments under legal, which includes the town attorney's office in the first section? And then the legal expenses separated out in the second, and it also includes um, any damages or judgments, outside council fees, uh, collective bargaining costs, uh, other costs, and then litigation expenses. So, anybody have any comments or anything on this side? I think. All set. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. The next uh, item we have. Uh, is our planning department and I have to tell you I, I've, I've come to know uh, Jason very well and having been on the master plan committee and I, I thoroughly enjoy it and I am actually enjoying my time at the planning board too and, and, and great presentation and we will be we continue to talk about the master plan we'll be talking about it later but uh, Jason Bashand our fine, uh, fine town planner is here can I have a, a motion to move the bottom line motion to move one five two four nine three Moved $152,493, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, anybody have any comments for Mr. Bashan? <coughs> Jason, is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think it's fairly straightforward. So one percent. I mean, it's yep. uh, it's pretty much even. It's it's pretty much equal to last year. Yep. Uh, pretty close, so yeah. <laughs> pretty much bare bones and, and great job and. All the meetings you do and what Laurie does in that office and just Absolutely. on and on. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Our next one is our town clerk. We invite Shirley Doheny up and Cheryl Hildreth. You know, one of the things that I think I've shared with all of you that you know, the number of people who come into your office and just marvel at the great work you do and, I, and I'm proud to say that I'm a, always a believer in adding another flair for the for the taxpayers and you did that this year and you stayed open Thursday nights I just how is that working before we move the bottom line I'm just curious I think that's wonderful I mean a lot of people work out of town and I think it's been very well received good um, some nights the numbers aren't large but the people that do come in seem very grateful that we're there to be able to meet their needs so I'm, I'm very glad that we've done it Thank you. Uh, we'll move the bottom line, Mr. Bridal. It is 280158. Moved by Mr. Bridal, $280,158, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, any questions or discussion? So we see a 9% uh, increase. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Shirley, there are 3% in here for you? Or is There's it, an amount for me. Amount, okay. $1,252 increase. Do you know what that is, a percentage? It's, uh, I think it's around 2.7. Okay. Okay, good. One, and one thing I'd just like to note is, uh, you know, there is a 9.3%, uh, but you got to factor in the fact that we have a number of elections. Elections, this year. I was going to mention. Well, that. last year we only spent 11, right. 11, 9, but you have three or four more elections this year, and that's mm -hmm. why it, it, the increase is for. Anytime there's a presidential election there. Well, is. sure, we have the deliberative session, then we have the March election, then we have the September federal and state <laughs> primary, and then we have the election in November. So, uh, no, excellent work. I, I think it's great. Any questions around the table on the town clerk? 
great job you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Tax collector. There's Donna around here. Donna? Yeah. Hello, Donna. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Tax collection. Hold on one second. There it is, tax. All right, uh, Mr. Bridal, can we have? Yes, uh, that would be 108-130. Mr. Bridal's moving a sum of $108,130, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Pretty straightforward uh, in this area as well. Anybody have any comments? And Donna, I hope that there's a raise in there for you this year. Uh, 3%. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. All set? All set. We're doing well on the collection of taxes, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the percentage? Do you have the percentage? Oh, yeah. have the percentage of, like, um, I think it's 92 right now. That's terrific. Yeah, Thank you. Bad. Thank you very much. All right. Christy will be coming back up for both finance, MIS, or I should say uh, more than finance, MIS, municipal insurance, personnel administration, and debt. Sure. Great. So let's go to finance first. So finance, the, uh, the subtotal for finance is 392613. Second. Mr. Bridal moves 392613, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Pretty straightforward here, too. I, I mean, once again, you guys have done an excellent job in this budget, I'm telling you. Any comments over here? Go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. Are you sure you moved the right number? Yes. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the finance, yeah. Just for okay. finance. Okay. okay. That's just the audit of the finance. Okay. Thank you. All right. Also. Thank you. Good. Yeah. You want to do audit while we're here, Christy? So audit services. Yeah. Twenty-nine thousand. Second. The sum of twenty-nine thousand. Second by Mr. Pluff. That's a, a contracted uh, number, right? With it's at Plaza and yeah. still? Yes, so that's 29000 for 2020. Anybody have any comments on uh, that area? All right. Municipal and uh, MIS, I'm sorry. Yeah. MIS department. Mr. Bridal, would you yeah. like to move? Subtotal for management information systems is 227793. Mr. Bridal moves a sum of $227,793, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This is the uh, management information systems area, very critical part, which not only includes wages, but repairs and maintenance, supplies and expenses, comp all computer support, new equipment, uh, replacement equipment. Yep. Yeah. Hey, anybody any questions on either side? All right. We have personnel administration. I'm sorry, municipal insurance. Now we Municipal know. insurance. Yes. yes. Municipal insurance, okay. Total of municipal insurance is 3,643022. Second. Mr. Brado moves 3,643,022, seconded by Mr. Pluff. You'll see many items in this this year's uh, municipal insurance is is down, really a 2% increase, which is you know, municipal insurance, it is what it is, right? Yeah, health insurance went up 6.1, so to have Fred, that only Fred up two, it's good. did a great job good. explaining yeah. that, too. Yeah, it's, it, what can we say? It went up, and I know it went up in the schools this year, too, I mm -hmm. think. So anybody have any comments on this side, municipal insurance? All right. Okay. Uh, personnel administration. Total personnel administration, 3,416,247. Mr. Brido moves a number of three million four hundred sixteen thousand two hundred forty-seven dollars, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This area is personnel administration, which includes, which is familiar to most everybody here, employee separation costs, uh, which is pretty much, uh, uh, you know, every year we deal with some of the sick leave buyback, uh, Social Security, Medicare, retirement, merit pay. Uh, New Hampshire retirement, both police and firemen, tuition reimbursement, which is uh, this year uh, is, is in there is, is, is 8,000. And then, of course, uh, compensated absent reserve fund. But I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that comes under the 
the umbrella of personnel uh, pretty much stayed the same uh, from uh, even a you know, you look at a three-year average and, and with everything going on, that's still pretty darn good with, with everything we deal with with in, in employees and all kinds of things. So anybody have any uh, any comments on this side over here? How about this? All set? All right. And the final one uh, for Christy at this time is debt. Debt service. Debt service. 2650242 million six five zero two four two. Mr. Bridal. Moves the number of the two million two five zero was it zero four two? No, it's two million six five zero two four two. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Yeah. All right. Just going to get to that page inside. All right. So it includes principal debt and interest. And it's gone up because the Church Street Force main I was um, SRF is coming on. So the Church Street, yes, mm -hmm. and of course. Uh, interest on tax anticipation notes and that's actually got better through the years by you know we don't we borrow we, we're paying we started paying taxes twice a year we, we only have to borrow a certain amount so it's been actually very good for quite a period of time anybody have any uh, questions on that area i do just have one go ahead Ms. Capretis. um is there a maturity date to this is there a long-term maturity date yeah, if you look in appendix d I think that kind of is yes. what you're looking for. It's all the that those are all of our um, bonds or SRF, Obligate. and then at the very on the last page it shows you how far out all of them go. Is that what you were? That was exactly what I was looking so. for. Yes. So it looks like based on the number that we just moved, it we have a. 20-year 20, 20 bonds, it looks like 20, 30 years. Yeah, okay. some of them were are 30, some of the older ones, but the last couple that we've done have been 20, okay. and the SRF is 20 also, which is uh, the Church Street one that's coming on this year, plus the um, larger wastewater treatment one that will be coming on in a few years, that's SRF also, so those are 20. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's thank an you. excellent uh, spreadsheet, too, and all the wastewater stuff, yep. Kings Highway, fire stations, um, wastewater treatment upgrades everything else so a uh, great job there all right so mosquito control do we have anybody here let's get here we are Our off season, so. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> so, those are frost hits. Except for like today. Go ahead and introduce degrees. yourself. Uh, Tim O'Connor. Tim O'Connor, thank you. Mr. Tim, Bridal? Yes, yeah, uh, mosquito control is 103250. Moved by Mr. Bridal, $103,250, seconded by Mr. Pluff. I would say a five year average looks like pretty much the same, same. almost every year. Great job, and, and for the folks at home, pretty much the majority, of, if not all of this, are contracted services. So, um, mosquito lava siding, uh, source reduction, GH traps, greenhead fly traps, adult yeah. Yeah, adult that's all, all done by dragon mosquito. A dragon mosquito, yeah, sure. They're in stratum. Uh, they're in stratum now. They were in Brentwood. Correct. Yep. Good. Great job. Okay. Thank you for. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Mara. Uh, Mr. O'Connor, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, I'm Mara. Sorry. Could you? Just give me an overview. Of, is the mosquito population getting worse, or has it remained constant over the past five, ten years? Uh, it, it remains remains fairly constant with the, uh, the flooding with, with, with the spring. At all. We have they have traps. They have several hundred traps around town. They they actually trap mosquitoes to see where where the activity is. So it's not like Park Avenue gets sprayed every three weeks. Park Avenue gets sprayed when, when they find mosquitoes there. But. Uh, uh, our biggest problem now is is monitoring the tri the triple E, the Zika, the the uh, you know the dungy fever. One of the reasons I'm asking, I I heard, I heard <coughs> when it goes around my neighborhood, you can hear it at ten o'clock at night. Yeah. So then you know the whatever. It seems to be less than before. Uh, but whether you, that's true or not, I have no. Yeah, clue. but do you see more mosquitoes? <laughs> Do I see more mosquitoes? Yeah, again, we, we don't, they, they won't spray unless unless they know there's mosquitoes in your neighborhood. Spray. Good. No, it's a private okay. I'm a mosquito magnet, believe me. 
<laughs> you don't want to be around me when it's summertime. Uh, oh, maybe I do. Oh, Miss Miss go ahead. Um, how often does the contract come up for bid? Three years. Every three years. Yeah, we we just we just uh, we're, we'll be in our second year of a three-year contract. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Our next department is welfare. Christy's got Mr. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll come up and do welfare. Oh, terrific. <laughs> Mr. Brado, you total, total welfare is $63,110. $63,110 $63, moved by Mr. Brado, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Pretty straightforward if you look across each line. Mm -hmm. It, it literally hasn't changed at all. Uh, anybody have any comments on the welfare section? We're actually down there because we dropped supplies and expenses to yeah. be more in line with what we're spending. That's right, yep. And a total of minus 1.12. Excellent job. Thank you. All right, we have the cemetery folks in the audience I see tonight. Jimmy, Stacy going to come up with you? Uh, Stacy, you get up here. Stacy, you going to come up here? Uh, 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 For the viewers at home, uh, uh, please introduce yourselves. My name is Mary Blackwell. I am the chairman of the yes. cemetery trustee. Hey, Jim. Uh, Jim Hunt, of oh, the cemetery. Stacy Noyce, cemetery. Thank you, Stacy. Debbie's husband. Oh, I right. absolutely yes. <laughs> is that how you're <laughs> so total cemeteries is one forty one nine fifteen. Second. Moved by Mr. Brado, one hundred forty one thousand nine hundred fifteen. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, anybody have any comments on the cemetery budget, Mr. Mara? Um, the department had requested two hundred thirty three thousand nine hundred forty nine dollars. And there's quite a discrepancy between the 141 that the town manager and the board select me. Can I get an explanation of what that, that's a large variance between the two numbers, about $90,000. Anybody want to? See the 2339, the bottom Second. line? Yeah. If you look, Dave, there at the end. Dave, if you, and it's an excellent point, if you look at the attached page 16, it, it's virtually three quarters down the town manager at that level really decreased everything right i know oh no i know that i i'm just saying okay. the public at home because so, they'll explain it but i just yeah. you know. i would like an explanation why right. there was such a big yeah, urgency well that's what we're going to for the town manager yeah. right yeah. does who wants to speak to that fred did you want to or jamie yeah. Yeah. go ahead assistant town manager jamie Solomon will come to the table explain all the uh, changes in the cemetery budget yeah. good evening oh, i'm just switching evening. Evening. um Essentially what happened is when it came to the town manager's level and looked at that, there's been some uh, funding mechanisms that are available to us. So we reduced a number of things from the operating budget in the eyes of keeping to our goals of staying at or below the default budget. And a number of those priorities are going to be addressed utilizing those additional funding sources. You'll see some of those come up in a Warren article uh, when you start looking at those. So Thank in you. other words, it's theoretically like the same amount of money that you put into the Warren article. Maybe not exactly, but we took those priority items and put them in. There were a lot of requests from the department head at that time that we took a look at, and again, given our goals of what we were trying to do, we reduced the number of those and tried to find alternate sources for them. So that's what leads to the number before you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Capri. Uh, just one quick question. So um, it's my understanding that the trustees have um, your responsibility is the, to manage the trustees, the funds that are within the trust uh, the no. trust trust funds, correct? No, the trustees of the trust funds deal with all of the funds. The trustees of the cemetery oversee the operations of the cemetery. So the funds from the cemetery are within a separate trust fund for the cemeteries directly, correct? That's correct. So you have the operational budget in front of you, right. and then there are two separate funds the trustees of the trust funds now have control of under the state law. So the funds that you were just talking about that are going to be under the Warren article is because the trustees of the cemetery funds are, in essence, transferring them into, into, a, different, into a different sleeve? No. Um, I, I guess I'd describe it that these are funds that, that frankly hadn't been used for a number of years that um, we had some work that we've done over the last couple of years and discovered these funds that 
had better appropriated use for them. Right. But, but by law, the trustees, the trust fund, oversee the money. The cemetery trustees over, oversee the operations. I guess sense? I'll ask the question differently. Sure. Um, under whose jurisdiction is allowing the transfer of the funds from the trust into this other pocket? So it'll be the selectmen are the authorized expenditures of that fund, right, Fred? And the town meeting on the other. And the town meeting, right. right. So that's, it, it depends on what fund they are, but in this case, you'll see a warrant article come forward to allow that use, and it's the town meeting that'll authorize that authority for that use. Because the trustees have uh, has have authorized the transfer of those funds to be used for this purpose. No, we've requested. It's more of a request. Sorry. It's a little. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. Fine. You're fine. Yeah. What we're doing is we're crossing over two or three different right. areas so of state I just law. Want, yeah, so I just want people, I, I'm asking the question in a way so that everybody can understand because we have trustee of trust funds yes. and we have right. trustees of cemetery funds, right. which are directed by by a trust. So just to, to control, right, what you're saying is the cemetery trustees by law oversee the operations of the cemetery. That is, purchase of lots, uh, burials, mm -hmm. the, the, the maintenance that these fellows do. Right. The money trustees, and the, the way I believe trustee you're asking your questions, funds. are our trustees right. who are an elected officials for the town. They oversee the growth and control of that. Then the state law gives us two different ways. Either the selectmen are authorized or the town meeting is authorized to expend those funds from those trust funds. What you're going to see is the town meeting, who are the authorized mm -hmm. people, will be asked to authorize the expenditure of those funds for these purposes. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So okay. there's no different, there's no change in the operations of this. It's no. Right. So it's just money that is usually used for these purposes that people have to vote for to say, can we spend it? That's correct. Right. Thank yes. You. Wait a minute. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Mar. Thank you. So pretend, this is a pretend world. Okay. These are all the I'll be like Washington. Wars, I don't like okay? hypotheticals, but yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, we'll go forward. Yes, sir. The voting. And they all get turned down. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at some of these things, but there was needed, like some of those, the health insurance was 17450 <laughs> And the town manager approved 500. Well, the people have to have the health insurance. So, so what would they do if it doesn't pass the warrant article? Right now, there is not a full-time employee utilizing that number. Um, and that's dependent on what happens with the votes, how the, the, the rest of that will be looked at. So right now, there is not a full-time employee receiving benefits. So that, that health insurance number you see, that $500 has been in there. For years, there was a full-time employee there who did not take health insurance. So the number you see in there wouldn't cover health insurance if we had a full-time employee. Currently, we don't have. But the department head was wanted seventeen thousand four hundred fifty. In order, would have. Correct. Why would you want that if you don't have a person? Because seventeen thousand. If there if there was a full-time employee, that's what the real cost of the employees the, the insurance would be. So that's why that's you good. see it being what it is. But there's no person there now. Correct. Not at that's what's decreased. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions on the cemetery? Uh, thank you. I'd just like to make a statement. Go ahead. If you guys saw the damage that was done oh, yeah. over that past snowstorm we had up there and the, the amount of work these guys have had to do to uh, correct that and keep the place open. Uh, I know Stacy was working with uh, Knowles' tree service up there today. And, uh, you know, the, they, these guys do, a, for, for the service they do, they give this town an awful lot of good service, and I really appreciate that. And the comment further, Joyce, and you'll see this in here, and Jamie's correct. So every year you hear the term cemetery burial trust fund. Right. So if I go out and buy three grave lots, you go out and buy six, all that money goes into that fund. And so what the, the, the Warren article is asking this year, because we have 500000 in that fund, whatever tree removal, those monies are going to come out of that fund, so it's like a wash. So we're not. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And the, the trustees, as, as Jamie said, the trustees of the trust funds that, you know, that whole group who's been voted on by us, they manage all the trust funds as a entity as a whole. Right. I was actually asking the question so that people at home oh, understood yeah. no, that it wasn't money. That I wanted them yeah. to understand. No, and that's why I just explained it to them. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. All right. All right. So we are now at executive. Town manager, and that's your very first tab. Mr. Bridal, you want to move a number? Yes, total executive is 31588. 31588. 
$315,883. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Um, anybody have any comments? Uh, we have the sections for the folks at home within this are the Board of Selectmen wages, which pretty much stayed the same, uh, 3500 or what is it, 3500 a year, Rusty? Yep. Yeah, pretty yep. much. Town manager uh, office. The, uh, which also includes the assistant town manager. We have the budget committee. We have trustee of the trust funds for that total. So anybody have any uh, comments starting, Mr. LeBranch? Anybody on this side? No. Over here, Mr. Henderson, anybody? All right. Fred, did you want to add anything? No. Okay, good. All right. The next one is government buildings. <laughs> Not that I can't use the exercise, but <laughs> so total government buildings is one hundred and ten oh one four. Second. Moved by Mr. Brado, one hundred and ten thousand fourteen dollars. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Custodial services, Fred. That was a new contract. We have a new contract. Yes, uh, it's within these within this appropriation. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any comments? And this has to do for the viewers at home, our town office building, mm -hmm. which we're in currently. Yeah. All right. Mr. Mara. Um, on the Costello services, is this because you were before like 13000 and there's a new contract. Is that contract just the money, or does it also include doing additional employees? <clears throat> there are no additional employees for the town. Same thing. It's all a contract. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The other section is other safety services. And we have a couple of lines here. I'll start with the first one. Yes. This other safety services is 507. 919, and this is for the hydrant system. 916, yes. Uh, yeah, 916. Uh, $507,916, moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Do you have any questions or comments on our hydrants? Yes. Mr. Morrow. Does that include updates, adding new ones, constant maintenance? Is that what it's all? That's five hundred thousand. It does not include any new hydrants. So that's all current hydrants. All keeping. current hydrants. Wow. Didn't new, new hydrants will add a fee for each hydrant that's added. Really? Yes. How many do we have now? There's about five hundred. That's a lot of hydrants. Yeah, and they in the, in the total system there's about three hundred in town. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. The street lighting is under that. That's the next one. Oh, that's the next one. I'm sorry. That's the next one. Sorry. So. We all set with them. Yes. The total street lighting is 274183. 274. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Moved by Mr. Bridal, $274,183. Seconded by Mr. Pluff under street lighting, which includes traffic light repairs and electric. Anybody have any comments? Mr. LeBranch. I just want to ask, how are they doing with that project? They're currently working on it. The weather has sort of put them a little bit behind, but right. they ended, they've indicated to us that the conversion of the uh, street lights from Unitel will be completed by the end of the year. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hey, thank you. All right. Just, I just wanted for the viewers at home, Mr. Brido, I know you have, there's another section here just explains the lifeguards. Fred, is that... There's two questions I have on this. Is this the placeholder we used to have so when the state supplied lifeguards to the two town beaches you paid out of here, or is that in case we hire lifeguards? Well, we need to have at least a dollar. Right. Yeah. Well, that's you know, what I mean. So line, and we yeah. do not have lifeguard program because we're not able to hire people. That's correct. The yeah. state's having a difficult yeah. problem as well, so oh, they don't I have the surplus that they used to feed to us. Yeah. Interesting enough for, what, Fred, three or four years during my tenure, we were... The state was supplying lifeguards yes, to they were. Uh, both Place Cove and Sun Valley. Yeah, for the folks at home, I mean, people think of lifeguards, they think of state, but in actuality, uh, we have two town beaches, and it would be nice to have them uh, have lifeguards, but that, I, I'm so thrilled you took that, you know, kept that line item in there. Well, because if we need them and we can yeah, find them, yeah. then we can use them. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. All right. Did you move that number, Mr. 
Well, there's really no. The, I didn't move the one dollar. <laughs> want to move the one dollar? <laughs> we well, can move it. I guess the dollar. Second. Second. Thank you. Good at our jobs. Of course. <laughs> it's much like the uh, what we did on the economic development, which is good yeah. to keep that in there too. I think we did a dollar on that. Um, what else? We got? Patriotic purposes. Patriotic purposes. We have uh, two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. By Mr. Bridal, $2,350, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Basically, patriotic uh, purposes, that's flags, flowers, other Memorial Day expenses uh, through the American Legion, American flags for town properties. And I'll also move the uh, total other, which is flower gardens, $500. By Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. A sum of five hundred dollars in this area as well. Anybody have any comments on that? No. Fred, did we miss any departments before we invite up Chris and Jen? Not that I'm aware of. I think we've done everything. Great. Yeah, well Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to invite up to the table now our public works director Chris Jacobs and our deputy director Jen Hale. Good evening, folks. Good evening. I want to thank you for uh, waiting for me to be heard and appreciate that. Great. And what we're going to do, uh, and this this is back to what we talked about before, because this budget's longer. So we're going to move. Mr. Bridal's going to move each section. So you want to start with the subtotal for administration? Administration, yes. One million six seven three four two eight. Second. Mr. Bridal moves a number under administration, highway and streets of one million six hundred seventy-three thousand four two eight. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Your, your backup is in the same area, or you have to flip a few pages because it's obviously public works, a large budget. So we're under the 4311. Anybody have any comments under administration? Mr. Henderson? Mr. Bridal? So, Mr. Price. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So the next one will be subtotal under engineering, twenty-eight thousand dollars. By Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This is for engineering services, twenty-eight thousand. Actually, there's a there's a decrease uh, from the year in that line. Uh, anybody have any questions on that area? Next one will be. Do you want to move the total in that area, Rusty? Now that we want to move the total of that. Okay. So the total will be one one million seven zero one four two eight. Moved by Mr. Bridal, one million seven hundred one thousand two hundred four hundred twenty eight. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. All right. The next is paving and reconstruction. So zero. Zero on that. Yeah. So the next one is cleaning and maintenance is one sixty one nine nine zero. Under cleaning and maintenance, one hundred and sixty one thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Notice that that area has uh, decreased a lot this year. Anybody have any questions or comments there? All right. Next one is subtotal for storm drainage is $60,000. By Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Do you have any questions in the air of storm drainage? All right. So the next one is uh, subtotal for snow and ice removal. Um, two, uh, sidewalks, sidewalks and curbs. It's zero. It's zero. Yeah. Could you explain that, please? That's it. Go ahead. In an Mr. effort to hold a tight line budget in comparison to last year's, um, we basically eliminated sidewalk construction. Um, 
as its own separate line. Any work we do do would be in concert with streets that we're doing sewer drainage and other things on. And if you needed maintenance, would that be pulled from here or are you do maintenance on the side? The maintenance would be pulled from the line that you moved before under repairs and maintenance. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, the next section okay, snow sub, and ice. Subtotal for snow and ice removal is 210306. Second. Moved by Mr. Brado, $210,306. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Um, Deputy Hale uh, gave a great presentation along with Director Jacobs explaining the hired equipment for winter. And you know, this, this budget is, and they've said it so eloquently, is here we, you, you just never know. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, here we are, right, uh, Chris? We had <laughs> Monday and Tuesday back to back. Of course, that's on th this current budget, but still, right. we, you just never know. What, so uh, we could have had <coughs> now, it, yeah, so. good job too, uh, guys. Any uh, comments? Thank you. So you want to move the total for paving yes. and reconstruction is four three two two nine six. Moved by Mr. Bridal, four hundred thirty two thousand two hundred ninety six dollars. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. All right. The next section. So you under the total uh, highway streets and bridges. So you have yes. a total of that. Yes. Two million one three three seven two four. Moved by Mr. Bridal, two million one hundred thirty-three thousand seven hundred twenty-four. Seconded by Mr. Pluff for total paving and recons. Uh, sorry, total highway streets and bridges. All right. Now municipal sanitation. All right. Wastewater treatment plan. Total is one million five four two one twenty-seven. Moved by Mr. Bridal, a total of one million five hundred forty-two thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. This includes, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, all the regular wages, overtime, staff development. This is the wastewater treatment plant section, new equipment, uh, you know, the grease disposal, uniform rentals, heating, electric water, the whole gamut. Yes, Mr. Mara. I have a question on the grease disposal. Go ahead. Chris, you went to depth last year in explaining about the grease and all this. Has it improved at all in reference no. to people not dumping it? <clears throat> that's why it's that's why that line's yeah. increased or So it's still depth. up to you and your department to take care of that. There's right. no way we <clears throat> can prevent them from dumping it, I guess. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Here. LeBranch. The um, the grease Cake that's in the church street still same that's what the majority of that money is for because right. um, so, the church street station's deeper it takes a bigger piece of right. back truck if you will to get it out um, for those that don't know it it does come in at times early in the spring before a lot of the restaurants open and as they close at the end of the year there's a lot of restaurant cleaning and we see a lot of that grease build up in there and it's solidified <coughs> in the pump station yeah. Really quick, if anybody's interested in seeing something that's similar on the DPW website under the sewer uh, wastewater treatment uh, division, I've put a, a interesting notes and it's a video about what they call fat heads. Um, and it explains yes. what it is. Um, Excellent. Or fat, fat berg, excuse me, not fat heads. It's a fat berg. Um, and it shows a different town that had a problem, but something very uh, much interesting if you want to see what all this grease does to a sewer line. All right. Quick question. Go ahead, Ms. Capretis. Um, two questions, I guess. One is, and forgive me, um, has there ever been a consideration of assessing restaurants something different <coughs> because of their impact on that line item? We try and be more um, considerate, if you will. Um, we do have a grease trap inspector. He goes through, there's over 800 or 1,000 inspections he does. Uh, he's in most restaurants two or three times a year. A lot of time it's education and re-education. Uh, they think we want the grease trap clean. We actually want the grease trap dirty and that you actually are like cleaning it out manually. And so there's a lot of um, misinformation, if you will. Plus we're in a process as these restaurants uh, change or improve and go through site plan improvements, we're going to outside grease traps where we have a better rate of actually capturing the grease so it, it, it will take time but trying to prove who 
it is actually yeah. to pin it on, it's almost impossible. Right. And a follow-up question. Um, is the reason why the is the lab analysis increase a function of this of the same increase for grease disposal? No, um, that has to do with the PFAS testing that okay. uh, for um, in the in, it's supplied to the water and we have to okay. track it now. Um, DES regulations. Okay, thank you. Yep. I had a question directed Jacob. So mm -hmm. the great uh, so the grease traps. Do you have a program where you check them the beginning of a season, let's say, and the end of a season? Yes. To see. Yeah. Yes. Good. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have any comments? Thank you. All right. We're on to municipal solid waste. Solid waste is 580829. Moved by Mr. Brado, $580,829, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This includes for the folks at home, too, municipal solid waste. This is our Regular wages, part time, overtime, uh, hazardous waste, uh, vehicle maintenance, replacement equipment, uh, collection bins. Pretty much these are the wages in this area. Right. All right. So the next one is a landfill operations. Post closure, seventeen seven point zero. <coughs> Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff, seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. A question for uh, either Chris or Jen. So, having been on the board in nineteen ninety five, when we closed the, uh, the landfill, it was a, at that time the thirty years. And we would have to monitor up top and all kinds of writing. So we are now in 24. Is that still the same? So what happens like six years from now is we, we get a little break here. We don't have to monitor. I doubt it. It'll pro probably presume um, only because it would continue to generate methane. So it would need air vent testing with the results uh, or the recent acquisition of PFAS testing. Yep. Um, this January, February, we expect to see uh, further orders handed down to us from the state, uh, and we'll also end up being doing PFAS testing for the, the landfill. Okay. But those uh, numbers are included in these numbers here. Great, thank you. So the next section is uh, transportation. <coughs> five five eight six eight zero. Second. Moved by Mr. Bridal, a number of five hundred fifty-eight thousand six hundred eighty dollars. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Anybody have any uh, questions on that? We all understand that area, right? Pretty much tipping fees and waste hauling. Pretty much the same. Uh, Next line is uh, subtotal for transfer station is 422-238. Second. Moved by Mr. Bridal, $422,238. Second by Mr. Pluff. Next June 10th, I'm proud to say June 10th of 1995 was when we christened, <laughs> we opened officially the transfer <laughs> station. And for the folks at home, that has been a remarkable thing. And and I know Mr. Sullivan was there that day. I mean, this that's been that'll be 25 years next June. And we had a soft opening Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's been a I mean, Walmart, Home Depot, and the transfer station, that's where I go. I mean, not, 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 necessarily, not necessarily out of order, but I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, it's like, uh, but it's, I just put it out there because I know many people here know it, but 25 years, it just, it just seems like we, we open that place up, right, Steve? Uh, I just, any I know, that's a hangout. A Saturday, <laughs> Saturday hangout for Brian. He likes to go to the dump. I know. See everybody. And Sundays, too. See everybody, you know? Yeah. See everybody in town. But it's a great thing. And uh, anybody have any comments on that? Yes, Mr. Mara. I'd like to <coughs> commend you and your people over at the transfer station. And it's happened a number of times to me. <coughs> During the, the last week, obviously, you couldn't collect trash in the snow of Monday and Tuesday. And we got put off the lab. And I was told it was going to be Wednesday. So I called up your office 
and the lady that answered the phone, <clears throat> who she is. She's clear, she's crisp, and she's very personable, and she said, so you can't gag me all the rules. And it was great. So I got in the car, I got the barrels in there, and I drove up. And when I actually bought it, it was around 12 noon, <clears throat> and I pulled in, and there was nobody there for that moment of five minutes or whatever, because <laughs> whatever, whatever. other people were coming. And I backed in, I got out of my car, and sat before, and I took the first barrel out, and there's nobody with me. Then a big gentleman comes in, it must be six foot three. <laughs> Walks out of the side door, comes over, takes the barrel from me, may I help you, takes it, that first one, empties it really nice, better than I, so I'm kind of struggling with the other blow, and he comes over and says, well, let me take that for you, he takes that. Service is absolutely outstanding, but the personal camaraderie between the town people and the people that are there, wasn't there like 15 years ago, but I've noticed it big time in the last year or so, and I must commend you on them and their attitudes and the work they do, and they do a great job, but to take it out of your hands and say, let me help you, is just unbelievably positive. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you know, I want to add, and I'm such a, and I've told Jen this a million times, I'm such a believer in this communication stream that this department does and others. Whether it's on Channel 22, alerts, website, immediate website. So everybody that had Monday and Tuesday trash knew what to deal. Yeah, and, and I, it's so good because people know that and they go to look forward. I know Rusty forwards a lot of stuff on behalf of Selectman, which is good. And it was never any questions because I, I know people who have Monday and Tuesday trash that already knew, yeah, it was a tough week. So guess what? So mm -hmm. it, it's, I, I think it's great. I agree with David. The, the pleasantries are just, yeah. yeah. And it's good to educate the public. Sure. The trash, the people that pick up your trash are also the people that plow your streets. Yep. And so when you when you have a snow emergency like we had, people have to realize that, yeah, there's going to have to be some concessions made, but these guys are out there working hard and always try to do the best they can. Absolutely. Well, I think they do a great job, Robin. Thank you. Yep. yep. Over the years, it's always been phenomenal. Yep. But very impressive. Great, thank you. So, uh, so total uh, solid waste disposal is nine nine eight six six eight. Moved by Mr. Bridal, nine hundred ninety eight thousand six hundred sixty eight dollars for the, the total of waste solid waste disposal. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. All right, and last we have sewage collection and disposal. So the. First the first part is uh, repairs and maintenance is 115,000. Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Actually, a decrease in that area, Chris or Jen? Anybody have any comments in there? All right, the next section is sewer treatment. Uh, subtotal for sewer treatment is 114091. Moved by Mr. Bridal, $114,091. And, and for those at home, the Exeter Sewer Agreement has been in effect many years, those for the residents of Warner Lane uh, in Hampton. So the total sewage collection and disposal is $229,091. By Mr. Bridal, two hundred twenty-nine thousand ninety-one dollars. Seconded by Mr. Pluff for the sewage collection disposal, and that gives us to a grand total. Grant, you want to do the, you don't want to do the uh, uh, municipal, municipal sanitation? Let's do that first. Yes. Do, uh, total uh, municipal sanitation is three million three five zero seven one four. Moved by Mr. Bridal, a sum of three million three hundred fifty thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars for municipal sanitation. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. And the grand total is? Public Works is 5,484,439. By Mr. Bridal, a number of 5,484,439 dollars. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. And for the viewers at home, excellent job. Literally 1%. Mm -hmm. Mr. LeBranch. I just want to mention today, uh, it's interesting, somebody was asking me about, uh, well, I told them that we were doing the public works tonight. And of course, this is the single big, biggest uh, budget yes. for all, of all departments. But when you consider, and I had to remind this person, the waste, the sewer um, treatment plant, <coughs> it's running 24 hours a day. There are people there 24 hours a day 
doing lab tests, constantly checking things. And when you think about the job and the responsibilities, plowing the roads, maintaining the roads, um, running the, the waste treatment plant, and the sewage uh, treatment plant. Thank you guys very much. You do an excellent job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, thank you. So that, uh, Mr. Ladd, go ahead. I get a sense that your overall maintenance budget is really tight this year. Is, is that a fair assessment? It, it is. It's tight. It's frugal. But for instance, the uh, waste water treatment plant line can be held level because we also have an ele that $11 million contract. The plans are at 90%. It's going out to bid in the next 30 days or more. Yep. Um, a number of those main maintenance issues will be that we would have otherwise had to address will be taken care of under that contract, and and it's essentially it's a full year's worth of work. Um, so you can you can be frugal there. You can hold the line. It makes sense. You've got another pocket. It's your pocket. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's what the people appropriated to keep the plan to code and, uh, and make some health and safety improvements in the plan and operational improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the budget portion, but boy, we're actually doing very good in time. Can we spend a few moments and go to Appendix E and talk about the rolling stock? If, Chris, if you could, uh, Jen, give us kind of an overview of three pages there of... Hmm? You got one? A little overview. A lot of uh, times we are asked, you know, are you just adding to, or are you just adding to your rolling stock? Uh, that generally is not the case. Uh, right now we're sitting down vehicles uh, because some have already been traded, some have been benched, deemed not, we're not paying the money to put them back on the road. Uh, so that's where the Warren articles come from. So for example, 2019 Warren article approved the purchase of a new uh, six-wheel plow wing truck. Uh, happy to report it's here today. Nice. Uh, so that truck gets traded. It's not added into the fleet. So what we call old number 40 that you see on your first highway page, mm -hmm. which is a 1997 International, yep. that will be removed from the fleet and replaced with the new 40, um, otherwise nicknamed 48. <laughs> so that's generally how uh, this works. So we update this sheet um, almost, depending on things that go in and out of service. So if I have something that goes down and gets benched, this sheet gets updated immediately. So just so the folks at uh, home and, and on my fellow members here in the Budget Committee, you see in Chris and Jen's uh, sheets here, there's a lot of tens, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And what, what you know, con uh, conditional rating one is good, 10 is worse. Right. Right. Some of our vehicles don't make it to 10. Right. I mean, that's, that's the honesty. You will hit a nine of, that gets taken out of service. Yes, go ahead, Mr. LeBranch. I saw that international go by my house last week when it was snowing. I think it's all rusty. Yeah. I, when I saw the truck, I thought, wow, time to get rid of that thing. I mean, really. Time is tomorrow. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know? Nice. <laughs> and by the way, the one we're trading in was, has actually been parked, so you didn't see the one that we're yeah. in. Yeah, you saw the one that's it's still worse. running around. Yeah, you yeah. saw the one that's... That's not very good looking. You <laughs> saw the 96, <laughs> the one that's a year old. You saw 41. Okay. okay, a lot of rust, unbelievable. And you know, the reason this correlates well, as everyone knows, is that when you look at this and it compares to what our folks are saying with Warren articles that are coming up with vehicles, Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we we pretty much have to all, well, not every year, pretty much every year, but it's replacement and all kinds of things. And the only thing on these sheets, so I just gave you an example on highway, what right. you'll see um, through the highway department inventory, sewer and drain, western treatment and transfer station is that uh, also putting in play that the Warren articles are voted on in March. That means we get out the door, maybe a purchase order or depending on a bid situation, right. April, May. Some of these trucks take six, seven, eight, sometimes more months to get, <laughs> thank you, um, or more. Uh, even our newest ones that were out in March just for standard one-ton trucks uh, because of Chevy's little downtime there, uh, we're not getting those until February. So there's the 12 months uh, Mr. Pluff was talking about. So 
even though we're voted in, it didn't mean that we got them right away, right. which is why we're always revolving. It's almost like we're always a year behind. So, and if you see, uh, hold on a second. So if you see in the final column of the notes, where you see replace 2020, this is what will be going on the warrant, those vehicles are asked. Mr. LeBranch? Yeah, just, you know, in 1996, <clears throat> it's 22 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed about it was, as well, is that it wasn't a map. That was the thing as it drove by my house, it's all covered with rust and everything. And I, I said, that's, that's not a Mac. That's one of the old internationals. It's the old internationals. 22 yeah. years old. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> it's time. Thank you very much. Yep. Any other questions in this section? Just Go ahead, Mr. Lath. The, uh, like police departments will order in mass for large areas. Can DDW departments create a coalition to order multiple trucks? We, we can tap onto the state bit. But the state <coughs> ordered all. We've got issues with trucks, and put it that way. And with Mr. Pluff's guidance a number of years ago, we focused in on a line of trucks that, for the dollar, will last a con more than 10 years, a considerable amount of time, um, and serve the public really well. Um, a number of years ago, we got uh, these truck line with what they call a Force Max engine. Um, it was kind of new technology. You paid for it in repairs and repairs and repairs. And when it got to that we were rebuying the truck every three years through repairs, it was time to, to cut them loose. And that's what we did. Anyone else? Good. So question for a director and deputy director along with uh, Mr. Welch and, and Mr. Sullivan and, and Christy Pullen. Fred, I'm going to pass these out because we're really making out, but I'm going to just have a few questions to ask uh, everyone. These are the most up-to-date, based on last night, warrant article approvals from the Board of Selectmen, and I, I, again, uh, you know, Fred and Christy were working right up to this meeting getting this uh, done. So here's my question, here's my question to my fellow board members. We scheduled a meeting already for December 17th, so we knew we were going to meet for final budget review next Tuesday. My question to you is, we could also meet this Thursday to review the warrant, start to review these and approve them, or we could wait till next Tuesday, see if any we get any more, do these on the 17th as well as final budget review. And remember, we still have not received all the warrant articles, and January 14th is the, the final night that we will bless everything on the warrant articles for the public hearing at the Hampton Academy on the term of the 16th. What is the wishes, because we just got these now, so Mr. LeBranch, did you have any? I thought, <clears throat> I thought we were going to meet this Thursday night. Am I incorrect? Well, I put that? the 12th or the 17th because we had we had said it's fine. We can do both nights. I yeah. I thought that we were going to start these Thursday night. The ones that I, you know, yep. the the, uh, the board of selectmen have approved for right. us. We could do those, and then we'll finish them up next Tuesday and do the final right. review. The reason as well. I brought up because we didn't hear so from last night. We just heard, and and I'm trying to to help uh, public works directors to make because to say if they can be here Thursday meaning oh well that's so that's why I'm bringing this up so what is the wishes of what you would like to do would you like to come Thursday do you feel the board needs us Thursday and Tuesday do you want to do Thursday and see if you have questions I mean it if from a planning perspective in that understanding that you would have to come here twice I can go along with one night okay because you guys have plenty to do, and right, and we so I'd be, I would just I'd be fine with that. Okay? Yeah, and you you have to realize if you look at these Warren articles that we got, mm -hmm. eighty percent of them been the same pretty much. Uh, these the cemetery, federal trust funds, the health agencies, the uh, uh, you right. know, right, a lot of them are, you know a lot of them are pretty much the same. Uh, every year. But but they're really good. So anybody else have any ideas? So is am I hearing? Tuesday's good for me, thank you. Two, work. 
Tuesday or Thursday? Just, just Thursday. Thursday. Forget the Thursday. Mm -hmm. Just come in Tuesday. We'll do them all. We'll do them all Tuesday. Oh, okay, but is Thursday good for you? Either either day is good. What? I was just clarifying if you were wanting us for both. No, you won't so have to come. We're going to do one night, but I'm so Okay, well then, that was all can we get all? Do we have them all? all we don't have them all right. yet. We, we, the ones we have here are all the ones that we had at this point That's in time. That's correct. Yeah. We are waiting for some of the trash ones, mm -hmm. and you're still waiting for... We're going to figure it out. We're still reviewing and they're going They're still reviewing it. that. So every <coughs> one article that we had that we were able to send to the budget committee, we, we did last night to get them here. So you'd have them as soon as... as, soon as no, I, I appreciate that. So mm -hmm. that was... Uh, the, this is the in total what we have so far. At the at the uh, board of selectmen, mm -hmm. we know there are a few others coming that to deal with the trash and all the the recycling and uh, don't know if there's anything else. So maybe so what? Collective bargaining, which I find collective bargaining, and that that so hopefully should be shortly. So. The other ones are ready Tuesday. Can we do them all? Because Tuesday, next Tuesday, we're going to do the final review, right? Final budget review. Right, budget review. Right, and we can do the more articles the same night. So that we can, we don't come in this Thursday. Can I have a please? Yes, please go ahead, comment. Chris. Please. Um, spent three days comparing the solid waste bids. It's like apples and oranges, and um, I feel like they're all not in the same cart, and the wheels are about to fall off the cart. Uh, that's how difficult <laughs> it is to <laughs> to uh, analyze it. We're meeting with our consultant on Thursday, and. Um, the board's not even aware of the ramifications of these uh, articles. My whole point in stay, saying that is every day I have, I'll have more and better information. Tuesday, I'll be more educated and better equipped to, to address any and all the articles that are out to that point. Um, that's all. Like you said, we're busy, and, and this is a, it's a literally an ongoing. Yeah, so if I'm hearing you guys correct, so Tuesday the 17th would be the good night for you and Jen to come in. We do want to plan on that. Hold, hold okay. on, go ahead. I just have one. Um, of all the Warren articles, do you have to be present for all the ones that we have to vote on? Well, I'm usually just, the I'm department heads are here for questions. Okay. Okay. I I'm guess just, not I, for all of them. Only right. So we would only need to be here to answer questions for public, public works, works right. ones. Right. There so, are others than public right. works in that package. So the, I don't know how the board feels about maybe reviewing the ones that are not public works and having two short meetings instead of one long meeting. But I, I mean, it's on my calendar, so I'm yep. I, I'm good with whatever the majority wants to do, and certainly what's easier for the department heads, but. I would, I mean, I'd prefer two short meetings instead of one long one, but that's totally up to everybody else. Would it be worth doing the non-public work ones tonight? If well, you know, that's another idea because we're, well, most of us, I say, are familiar with those non-public works ones. That would gain us, I mean, it's 820, that would, that's an excellent point, Mr. Bridal, and then, then we'll do next Tuesday. So plan on Tuesday for, okay, okay. for you guys. So and you're good. If anything good. changes, let us know. No, we'll definitely do okay. Tuesday. And the other thing to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, is that after next Tuesday, we don't have any scheduled meetings of this committee until January 14th. And so there may be, and I just put it out there, and I know Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Welch could appreciate this, we've had these emergency meetings uh, between Christmas and New Year's if a warrant article is not finished and we need to get approval. So I just want to mention up front, that we've been lucky so far, but there may be, like last year, we had to call a meeting between Christmas and New Year's. But just remember, so after Thursday and Tuesday, there's no scheduled meetings until January 14th when final review of all warrant articles and any other changes in the public hearing. But I like Ms. Capertis's point, uh, and then I also like Mr. Bridles. What is the wishes of the board? Because we've got warrant articles that I know we could approve tonight. That That is boilerplate stuff we've had. Fred Stephen for... Why don't I uh, let give it an let's give it an example? I think the first one you'd go to is the uh, human services. Business. Yes. Thank you, uh, Jen and Chris. Thank you so Thank much. You. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Sullivan. Can I make a suggestion? It seems the budget went well. Do you want to consider finalizing the budget tonight? 
that'll allow Christy to finalize that numbers for you. It would appear there were many changes. That'll take that yeah. off your plate as well. I don't think we made any changes. We didn't right. make any. Right. So that's what Mr. Sullivan's point is, and that that's way good. that would be. Uh, I'll start over <coughs> here. Do you, how do you I'd be good with that. I'd be good with that. I'm fine. Um, yeah, Mr. Henderson. All set tonight. In other words, with, let's let's give a final number. Okay. Uh, Christy, do you want to give us a final number, or we'll move it? Mr. Brado will move it. Mr. Pluff will second it. Okay. So the final uh, budget number is twenty-eight million. Three hundred and fifty-five thousand six hundred and eighty-five dollars. We are we are moving. Mr. Bridal is moving for the views at home a number of twenty-eight million three hundred and fifty-five thousand six hundred and eighty-five dollars for the proposed twenty twenty operating budget, seconded by Mr. Pluff. There are any discussion on that? We've gone through all the departments. You know, we did police and fire first, public works tonight, all the other departments. Again, I have to thank the town because it did a great job this year. I, 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 I've been doing this for a long time and excellent. And I, I think we all took the time to look through it. Does anybody have any comments about that number? All those in favor of recommending the 2020 operating budget. Unit information, eight. please. Is this the, to, to forward to the public hearing? That's yes. correct. Yes. 2028, it's unanimous, and of course, uh, Mrs. Brother Russell is absent, but so she had a school board meeting tonight, so we have, we have uh, eight. Now, do we have to move the default number two? No, that's only the Board of Selectmen, and that's going to change correct. Okay. A, a slightly, because there were some um, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's, it's increases in the library wages that are in the budget, but didn't make right. it into the default, because they happened after we yeah. put the budget together. So I'll be bringing that back to the Board Excellent of Excellent call, Mr. Sullivan. I mean, so the, just for the viewers at home, the Budget Committee has recommended the public hearing on January 16th at 7 p.m., the operating budget of $28,355,685. So we are done with the town budget. Now, Mr. Bridal, a uh, couple of the health agency warrant so article. I looked the, uh, the uh, human service agency, for, and, and there's a list of them here, and I yeah. don't want to read them, but there I don't believe there's uh, much of a change from last year. I think two of them changed, uh, the Richie McFarland Center. There was an increase in the Rockingham Meals on Wheels, but the total number of that uh, warrant article be 183039. Moved by Mr. Bridal, a number of $183,039, seconded by Mr. Pluff. These are the human service agencies that we, the town has graciously funded through warrant articles for years. Mr. Bridal is correct, very minor increase uh, in one of the areas which brought it up to that. Uh, do we have any discussion on these? All those in favor of moving the Human Service Agency's article to public hearing? All, all those, okay, we have eight, eight in favor to move. All right, so that one's done. Now, the Recreation uh, Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund, Rusty? Sure, shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $126,200 for the following purposes of Park Re and Recreation Department? A. Purchase playground equipment to replace the broken equipment for the library playground, 35000 That's the playground across from the library. B, skateboard park renovations and concrete work, $20,000. C, landscaping tree and invasive growth removal at Lou Brown Park, skateboard park, Eaton Park, and Tuck Park at $20,000. D, laser grinding at Eaton Park to make safer playing conditions, $20,000. E, tennis courts to reline rink surfaces and repair cracks, $9,500. Recreation equipment maintenance, $4,000. Recreation playground maintenance of $1,000. General building repairs of $3,000. Skateboard park maintenance of $2,500. Shed repair and roof and cleaning and new doors on the cave building, $6,700. Replace two, two parks overhead garage doors at $4,500 as determined by the Board of Selectmen and the town manager and the park, director of parks and recreation. And they authorize the withdrawal of 
$126,700 from the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund established for these purposes under Article 44, the 2007 Annual Town Meeting. Moved by Mr. Zero tax impact. Moved by Mr. Bridal. Second by Mr. Plot. Mr. Mm -hmm. Ramara. Why are these two numbers different? What number? It says at the top it raised 126,200. Oh, in the bottom, 126,700. There's 500. Yeah. There's five hundred dollars difference. It was a typo. It should be the seven hundred. Yeah, it should be the seven hundred. It should be the seven hundred. Okay, so we'll amend so that. So we'll amend that that top one to uh, one twenty six seven hundred. Right. Go ahead. Okay. So okay. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Clough. Second, Mr. Mark. Yes. My question is, you're saying you remove it from the fund. How much money is currently in that fund? I don't have that information with me, but I do know that uh, there's sufficient money to um, cover those charges. Those expenses. I didn't bring that information with me. I didn't know we were going over fund over the Warren articles. Tonight. I, which I, I almost think there's three or four hundred thousand. I mean, Fred, don't we have? We have no, tons, no. There's no. a couple hundred. There's a couple hundred. Hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So like we've that. got it, and that's once again these are special revenue funds that we've established years ago. So all this, these, these maintenance, which I love to see. This is what we do. An excellent Warren article, by the way, comes from this fund. I'm just trying to understand. No, I know. I know. Yeah. And you might want to point out that that money is the 15% from the park. 20% from the park. All those in favor? Unanimous. Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 to carry out all lawful functions al allowed under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture grants and to authorize a withdrawal of said sum 90,000 from the police forfeiture special revenue fund created for that purpose under article 55 of the 2003 town meeting zero tariff tax and by mr brown second by mr pluff this article has been on for, for 17 years forever all those in favor unanimous uh public works building modifications yeah let's do that one okay. go ahead Show well time. do we uh, Fred, I know they're not here, but you could answer questions on this one, right? The building uh, modification. Shot. Building I think we explained it in the article. Yeah, yeah they did. When I read it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, yeah. thanks, Rusty. Go ahead. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $85,000 for the purpose of interior building improvements to the DPW's main office? Improvements in, include the installation of an air filtration system with the maintenance mm -hmm. office to filter fumes and other airborne particles from entering the existing office space. It also includes in the renovation of the exist, is it existing yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> kitchen, bathroom, That's and meeting good. area to provide separation of the existing spaces to be able to facilitate meetings at the DPW office, to provide a location to have breaks and meals that, not, that does not double as a meeting space, and a bathroom entrance, and to update the aft update the bathroom for unisex use. Said sum of $85,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation for RSA 32 colon 7, 7 or 6 and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2023, which is ever sooner. Moved by Mr. Brown, seconded by Mr. Pluff, Ms. Capretas. A couple of questions. Um, one is, does this mean that we are, uh, that we're suggesting 85,000 until all of this is done, no matter how much, until, until everything is done? Or until March 31st of 2023. That's the total. 85,000 is the maximum that can be spent, and they give us the 2023 to, to do give them it. Got it. To, to do the work. And then just one other question, yep. because a lot the last few that we voted, which is zero tax impact. If we if we didn't approve these, just say if we didn't approve these, where would that $85,000 go? Stays in the fund. Stays, Stays in the, in the fund. fund. And could be used for other uses. No. If we didn't approve it here. No. There's only two ways that surplus funds, so-called, can be used. Okay. One is by an appropriation warrant article, and the other is by the selectman to reduce the tax rate at the time the tax mm -hmm. rate is set. Other than mm -hmm. that, the money can never be spent. Okay. So has the month has the surplus ever been used to reduce the tax rate? We do it every year. We do it. Yeah. Okay. 
except for this year. Except. So, for instance, if the, le the, the three words unassigned fund balance weren't in here, voters would still vote for 85000 It would just get added to the total amount that was raised and appropriated. It would, it would impact the tax rate. That's okay. correct. Thank Where you. this is already, we've already paid into that. So already, okay. Uh, move to second. Any uh, other comments or questions for Mr. Welch or Mr. Sullivan in this area? All those in favor? Unanimous. Let's do the transfer station one, Rusty. All righty. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to cons conduct a transfer station improvement feasibility study to balance the changing rubbish and recycling markets as well as the current operations? The facility will require modifications to be able to address the needs to segregate materials, improve internal operations, making the building modifications and res research alternatives for disposal. The study will provide recommendations, facilitate immediate improvements, such as the purchase of storage, trailers, dumping containers, earthwork, and provide planning level designs and the cost for future appropriations requests. The said sum of $50,000 shall come from the unassigned fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation under RSA 32,76 and shall be not lapse until a proposed purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2014, which is ever sooner. 20, 2024. 2024. 2024 Mr. Bridal moves it, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any comments on this? Mr. Mara. My question is, um, this is definitely just a feasibility study. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who are the people that do it? Are we going to hire outside contractors or is it internal? No, it'll be hired by an outside engineering firm by bid. Thank you. Yeah, this is a very important. You know, I mentioned 25 years. 25 years. We need cool. to we need to look at this upgrade of this facility. It's so popular, as you know, David. You go there. To, I mean, it's like. I haven't met you there, but I go a lot. Well, <laughs> I'll buy you a coffee if you want. <laughs> yeah. You so, don't want to drink the coffee. No, no, no. no. <laughs> all, well, we have a, all those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Um, this next one, Joyce, you'll appreciate. And excellent questions, by the way. Uh, cemetery tree removal. Shall the town of Hampton vote and raise appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the pur purpose of removing trees from the High Street Cemetery in order to protect grave sites, gravestones, and abutting properties and roadways? Such sum to be used by the tree warden to contract for removal of the trees to, and for the restoration of said cemetery caused by such removal and to authorize the tree warden and consult consultation with the Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, and the Cemetery Trustees to contract the work for said purposes and to authorize the funding of said appropriations through the withdrawal of $50,000 from the principal of the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund, which ha has a principal balance of more than $500,000. It is generated from the sale of cemetery burying plots. Majority vote required, zero tax impact. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, moved by Mr. Brow, second by Mr. Pluff. Everybody understands it? All those in favor? Uh, mm -hmm. Rusty, you want to do the $300,000 road improvement? That's pretty standard every year. You want, you want to do the uh, fire prevention vehicle? Well, it's, it's yeah, I just, the only one back in the beginning, I was going to go, we'll come back there later. Yeah, go ahead. Fire All prevention, right. let's go. Fire, pre fire prevention officer's replacement vehicle. So the town of Hampton votes to raise an appropriate sum of $40,000 to replace and equip a new vehicle for fire prevention officer. This vehicle is utilized by the fire prevention officer to attend various meetings at various sites, conduct on-site inspections, and respond to fires to investigate the origin and cause. The vehicle carries the necessary tools to perform the work of the fire prevention officer as well as his firefighter turnout gear. The replacement will be traded in or sold if deemed prudent by the fire chief town manager and the board of selectmen. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation under RSA 32,76 and shall not lap shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2021, whichever is sooner. By Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Plup. Excellent job, Rusty, last night. I know you added that line in for the, you know, the put as far as the... So it traded in. It just it cleared right. it up a it little bit. It cleared it up. Yeah, I mean, that's the good thing to get rid of these other ones. Anybody have any comments? So this is for the fire prevention officer's vehicle. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
<coughs> we have the building inspector vehicle. Sure. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise appropriate the sum of $24,500 to purchase a Chevy Colorado pickup truck equipped with a 2 We're going to take it out. Mid-size. We're gonna we're gonna take the word Colorado out. That's what I thought. We we talked mid about mid-size pickup truck. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. It should use state bids. It should say instead of Chevrolet, it should say mid-size. Right. right. A yeah. purchase yeah. a mid-size. Mid-size. Okay. Mid-size. And the only reason they know is Colorado is not made anymore. That's they actually it is. I think they I checked. They make them. It's a new little one. Still yeah. Well, yeah. They're stopping <laughs> at 2019, I believe, is what. Well, the, the, the 2021 is for sale right now. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to use the state bid yeah. and, and get a mid-size pickup truck. Yeah. So a mid to purchase a mid-size pickup truck to be equipped with a two-way radio for the building department. With the replaced unit, a 2012 pickup truck to be traded in or sold if deemed prudent by the building inspector, the town manager, or the board of selectmen. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation under RSA 32 colon 76. Shall not lap until the purchase is completed or by March 31st, 2021, which is ever sooner. By Mr. Brattle, seconded by Mr. Pluff for a replacement for our building inspector's Mr. vehicle. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Welch. Just, just so the board understands, or the committee understands, uh, we're going to be looking at these warrant articles again, those that require appropriations, to see whether or not we can squeeze some more money out of resources in order to avoid tax rate. Excellent. Thank you. And we can always amend that number at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All those in favor? I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mark. What's the mileage on the 2012? I can't tell you, but it's pretty high. Uh, he, he's, he's out of that vehicle every single day, oh. eight hours a day. It should be so. in the back of the uh, should be yeah, the back of the uh, re it's probably in the back of your budget under yeah, under, under, under equipment. Yeah. But it's 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 reached its life. Pickup truck has five to seven years of life. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, they rot out in this environment because of the salt air and salt water. Right. The reason I'm asking the question, I have a 2008 FGL. It says uh, there's no rust. It appears but you're not riding through the beach I'm not area. Driving through salt water. <laughs> right there you go. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> oh, six, at this at the uh, time when they posted it, it was sixty-seven thousand miles on it. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty-seven thousand. Yes. Totally. Yeah. But it's the salt water that kills. That's them. out in the air all the time. Right? Oh yeah. They, so it does look like that garbage truck going by your house. They, they run right <laughs> out. You know. <laughs> We keep the pickups in pretty good shape, and then we keep them washed and cleaned and waxed and so forth. But it's underneath. That's of me. Yeah. It's again. It's a bad deal underneath for most of these trucks. I, I trust you completely. That mileage was as of uh, May 11th too. So. Yeah, May right. too. Yeah. So May yeah. Too. Oh, May too. You're right. Sorry. May too. So it's been through the summer. Yes. And the floods. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. So the next one is the firefighter turnout gear. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 27500 to be added to the firefighter turnout gear capital reserve fund created under Article 17 in the 2019 annual town meeting and with accordance to the provisions of RSA 35? With the sum of 27.5 to come from the unassigned fund balance, majority vote required, zero tax in. Moved by Mr. Brown, seconded Second. by Mr. Pluff. Uh, this is a great team effort. Uh, th this goes back to last year when every one of us at this table, unanimous with the selectmen, the management, the fire department worked very closely on this. It's so important to have our firefighters have their turnout gear. Um, in the second turnout gear. Go ahead, Mr. Henderson. Yeah, quick question. I know this uh, program's going on for a couple of years now. Does this pretty much conclude that they have all new turnout gear for all the guys so they all have their secondary piece? Everybody mm -hmm. has their first and secondary pieces. At the time we put the program together and created the Capital Reserve Fund, at that time we thought $25,000 over a 10 year period when the, the uniforms have to be yeah. replaced would be sufficient to do it, but the, the cost of those facilities has gone up to 27.5. So we need to put the 27.5 in in order to keep pace for that 10-year increment. Very important. Oh, absolutely. This, uh, this article. Mr. Here, Mark. Yeah. Quick question. You've got the 27.5 and you won't be using it for nine years. Do you invest it? Do you put the 27.5 in the goes to the trustees, the trust funds, and they invest it. <coughs> they invest it. They invest so it. Yes. Yes. It's invested. 
Thank you, sir. That's correct. <laughs> it's, it's also Mr. Morris staggered purchase. Yeah. Some are five years old, some are seven years old. So right. Right. Understood. Right. The money will be coming out as necessary. That's right. all. The re and the reason they got in this problem is a number of years ago they bought all the gear at once. Right. And yep. so then it all came due at once. Yep. And so what they're trying to get into a plan where it's... I think I, I'm really behind this, believe me. They need the right uniforms to protect themselves. They have to go wash them. Yeah. It takes eight hours. I'm very right. involved in that last year. I, it's a slam dunk. Thank you. Well, by Mr. Brado, seconded by Mr. Pluff for the uh, turnout gear warrant article. All those in favor? Aye. The next one is something we see every year, and I'm going to start off by saying hats off to you guys. Having two household collections, I think it's absolutely terrific. I went to both of them, and it's just... <laughs> I figured you would. You're here every day. <laughs> no, no. I, I, and I'll tell you why I went to both of them. We don't hold the it the dump. Because the first time, I forgot yeah. half the stuff, and somebody at my house reminded me that... <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, I think it's terrific, and I went both May and August. Yes, go ahead, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Show it. Right, exactly. Show town of Hampton vote to raise appropriate the sum of twenty thousand dollars for the purpose of conducting two household hazardous waste collection days during the calendar year 2020, and to authorize the board of selectmen to permit the towns of Newcastle and Hampton Falls to participate in said collection days at their own expense and to apply for and accept and expend any such purpose and to apply for and accept and expend for any such purpose any funds from the state of New Hampshire, the federal government, and any private source which may, may be made available. Just so you understand, we do receive a grant from the state government yes. to fund each of these particular right. activities. That's why it's only $10,000 per activity. And if we can, again, we're going to amend this to include surplus funds, uh, the unassigned fund balance funds in there to pay for it if we can. Great job. Thank you. Moved by Mr. Bridal. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Household hazardous waste collections. There are two again this year. Oh. All those. Uh, go I ahead. have a Mr. question. Curtis, go ahead. Um, it, maybe it goes hand in hand with what you just said. But why does it cost us $10,000 for each? The state only contributes a small amount towards it. The, best, the rest of it comes from the town. But what are we paying for? For that? The what is the cost? The disposal. We're getting rid of a lot. Oh, so we have to pay for the we disposal. We have to pay for the disposal. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one, conservation fund. Shall the town of Hampton vote to erase and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hampton Conservation Commission Fund? This fund is used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of otherwise or otherwise conserve and property utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36-A sections 1 through 4 inclusive. Moved by Mr. Prado, second by Mr. Pluff. Any comments? <coughs> Mr. LeBrant. That's, that's, this is something we do every year. We do all, yes. I hate to I hate no, to ask these questions. Um, it's it's great that I mean it's great that we do it every year, but um, the twenty thousand dollars goes to do what? What does it do? Purchase property. They could purchase land. They can so purchase they fund. Put it right. Fund. When a property <coughs> they wish to acquire to protect, they have the money to, to do buy so. it. Do we know how much is in the fund currently? Not off the top of my head, but we, we do this every year. I believe it's something like sixty thousand dollars or probably a good something estimate. like that. And it gets yeah. built up like it's not a lot. And, no, right. and it gets okay. it allows them to buy those unique pieces okay. of things. Okay. So, All right. so it's not like we've got a two million dollar conservation no. fund. The no. other thing too, and okay. Mr. Pluff just alluded, so sometimes they make agreements with purchase of properties to protect conservation land. They have to the kind of borders or that. That's okay. Yeah. The reason the article is here is so they have money to be able to commit the town to a purchase agreement before the property is sold to someone else. And if we didn't have this reserve fund, where would those funds come from? They wouldn't come from anywhere. They have to wait for the next town meeting a year, for, a year later. And by then, that property would probably be already sold. Okay. So it gives them that opportunity to at least put a placeholder on that piece of property right. until we can get to town meeting. Right. Or if, unless there's a whole, enough money there to cover it. No. Okay. So the herd farm, Warnock, or Rusty's absolutely right on. So in 2003, 
we, the vote is voted three million to conserve that huge open space and working with the herd family. So the conservation acquired development rights so that nothing else would be developed. And so in return, nothing's going to be built on that property for eternity. Right. So, I just want well, to, yeah. The town could do something, could do something right. but we may Yeah, I just wanted to make sure no, that the balance hey, listen, is isn't good. exorbitant and we no. just keep on no. saying, yeah, sure, 20,000, 30,000, no, no. whatever the number is. Give sure Chris yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Moved by Mr. Brado, seconded by Mr. Pluff regarding the conservation fund. All those in favor? Unanimous. We have one petition article as of right now, Christmas parade. and that is on petition of Kristen Russell and at least 25 registered voters to see if the town will vote and raise an appropriate the sum of $3,000 to pay Experience Hampton, Inc., the organizer of the 2010 to 2019 Hampton Christmas parades to help defray the cost of the expense of the 2020 parade and rel related activities. Pretty straightforward. It's been 3000 for a zillion a years. Moved by Mr. Bridal, second by Mr. Plop. $3,000 for Experience Hampton, the Christmas break. Everybody say ho, ho, ho. Everybody. Ho, ho, ho. Unanimous. <laughs> the, only, the only other one, Mr. Bridal, I think we could do tonight, and the rest we'll leave for Public Works, is on page five, the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. Another great thing we instituted years ago, and that started when we were doing Route 1 over in 1999, uh, to put $300,000 in a road capital improvement reserve fund. It's the greatest thing to do, and Mr. Walsh has been a big proponent. I, I would like to even see more in that, but let's see. Amen. <laughs> well, and, and you know what? If somebody makes a motion to change it, you might see my vote go up. I think 300000 Rusty would tell you, 20 years ago that was fine, but... We, if we're going to start doing major roads improvements in this town, which we need to do, we've got to build these things up. But anyway, go ahead, Rusty. So the way, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise an appropriate sum of $300,000 to be added to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund <coughs> created under Article 16 of the 1998 Annual Town Meeting in accordance with provisions under RSA 35 for the purpose of maintenance and or reconstruction of streets? Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Would uh, you entertain a motion to increase uh, the amount? I would love. Uh, okay. I, I would move to increase the $300,000 to $500,000. Moved by Mr. Ladd. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Henderson. I think it's an excellent motion, Mr. Ladd. Uh, anybody want to comment on that, Mr. Henderson? Yeah, I think this is a very important area. As uh, you know, everybody knows, you drive down you know, the majority of the roads in this town whether it's High Street, Winnicott Road, Base Road, President Circle, I don't care where it is. I was talking to him the other day, Presidential Circle's been over 40 years since they've ever done anything. We have a lot of road issues and a lot of road problems. Uh, in the next few years, it's going to be a major issue. So now we've got to start putting some money aside to try to, uh, you know, play catch up for roads that haven't been done. So I think it's a great idea, and uh, we need to do something. Mr. Bridal. Hey, just to add to that, with the, uh, the good work of our Public Works Director and our our deputy public works director, you know, every, every time they pick a road to do, they don't just go in and repave a road. They want to make sure the drainage is correct, the sewer is correct, everything's correct before they go and do it. So that costs you a little bit more to do, but at least you're getting it done so that hopefully that road will not deteriorate over the years. And so uh, they've done an excellent job with, the, with their schedule. Uh, you, you'll look at, is it Ann's Lane? They did the last one where they where they went through and, and they made sure the sewer and everything was done under it. I believe Richard or Elaine Street, Elaine, Elaine. Street, they're doing, uh, getting ready to do uh, for the same reason, because they need to do yeah. the sewer and stuff under it. Because if you don't do that stuff, two, three, four years, you're just going to have to dig it up to, to fix the sewer and stuff. So it's, I, it makes I, a lot of sense. I, I just so we understand, Public Works did do an estimate for us, and we are currently $115 million in arrears on, in, on maintenance of our infrastructure yeah, for roads and sewers right. and drains. Right. That's a substantial amount of money that's going to have to be paid out at some point in time. Mr. LeBranch. Thank you for not saying a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> a couple hundred thousand? I can handle that. Thank you for not going up to a million, because that I have to probably say no to, but a couple hundred thousand I can take. You're, you're betting the roads could outlive us. Well, 
I can only do so much. A little, you know, a little at a time. You can't get it all done at once. But thank you. Any other comments on this? So road improvement capital reserve fund. A motion by Mr. Lab. Seconded by Mr. Henderson to change this amount from $300,000 to $500,000. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. So, Rusty, if I look at this, I think the rest, if we look at uh, just to review, Mr. Welch, Mr. Sullivan, and Christy, block road, sewer, and drainage systems, we'll hold off on that. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't I got to get to now. the transfer station. No. <laughs> Highway block grant. Um, um, That's a traditional annual article. Uh, let's do the highway block grant. Yes. Uh, second page. Okay. Shall the town of Hampton vote and raise appropriate sum of four eight six two three one for improvements of streets consisting of pavement overlays adjustment to structures to prevent paving and repairs and replacements to damage re de repairs replacement of sewers if needed for pavement repair repair of sidewalks and driveway openings crack ceiling curb installation and improvements and repair to town parking lots and parking areas upon the completion of said work in this article if funds remain unused DPW may proceed to the next street on their priority list until said list until repair list until unsaid portion is spent. Said appropriations shall be offset by the state highway block grant estimated to be 323509 and shall be non-lapsing under appropriations per RSA 3276 and shall not lapse until projects are completed or by March 31st, 2022, whichever occurs soon. Moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Plough for the viewers at home, and I know Mr. Welch will add to this. This is a really good article, and, and of course, it's offset by funds that we get from the state highway block grants, right, Fred? That is correct. Yeah. Before those funds just went to general revenue. Correct. We had them moved over to the highway so we could start doing paving with them. Um, Ms. Capers. And how does the highway block grant estimate change based on the amount that we need to raise or appropriate? It's provided by the state, and it's a percentage of the gasoline tax, right. yeah. and they prorate it to the individual cities and towns by population. So for this Warren article right now, if we vote on it, we're actually just suggesting an increase of the difference between 486 and 323, mm -hmm. which That's is 262722 That we raise from property taxes. Right. Okay. Right. Actually, okay. it's 163000 yeah. yeah. About 163 yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. average, yeah. It's so we, it eliminates the uh, a large portion of the ra raising money yep. from property taxes in, in order to do the same amount of work. And I have another question. Go ahead. I can continue. Um, so here they also say um, they move on to the next street. Who decides what we, needs to be we done? We have a list of all the streets in town. We have them arranged by the condition of the individual mm -hmm. road. And when they go out, they, they do an analysis of the roadway. The roadway is analyzed, and everything that's in the roadway is analyzed. So they get a, a, a rating for that particular roadway. The ones that have the worst ratings come first. And, okay. and we go through that list for the entire town. Um, and, and one of the things okay. that happens with that is sometimes winter is worse on some roads oh, yeah. than others. Oh, yeah. And so that rating can change. Right. Because that, so the list will change. So we, had, we had one a couple of years ago where we came in the spring, <coughs> we took a look at it, and the road was gone. We had to redo it. Sure. Um, and part of this warrant article has several, like, paving, structures, yep. um, sewer, sidewalks. Um, how does that get prioritized? It gets so prioritized it, because the, the individual road that needs to be done is on a priority list, and it's arranged by number. And when you go down to look at it, if, before you can pave the road, you may have to fix things on the roadway. Otherwise, you're, you're just causing a future problem. Correct. But so, for instance, last winter when all of the town parking lots, like, um, you know, all the, there were several beach parking lots that got washed out either last year or two years ago. They might have gotten flooded, but they didn't um, get washed out. But, they were, but here it says improvements and repairs to town parking lots and town parking areas. So of this $163,000 that we're talking about, 
in, I would assume that the parking lots take precedent over roads and sewer. Not necessarily. Like I'm trying to understand where the money gets spent. It gets spent where the public works department says it needs Just, to okay. get spent. Yeah, right. because it, because something has literally fallen apart or it's okay. on the schedule to be spent for that particular facility. Okay. We don't raise any money for sidewalks or parking lots. Zero. Okay. The town doesn't provide for their maintenance at all. If it's going to be maintained, it has to come out of this account. Here. Okay. Thank you. Mr. LeBrant, just want to um, clarify, Joyce, they got flooded, but they didn't get washed away. Okay. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Were, okay. But they still needed to be repaired. There were a couple that got washed out two in years. the March yeah. storm two years, two years ago. Right. What she's referring right. to. It did get destroyed. It had to be rebuilt, and it was reimbursed by FEMA or another one. Right. right. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Federal government reimburses for it. Okay. Right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. So moved by Mr. Bridal, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor of the highway block grant, unanimous. So <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to skip over lock roll. We're going to skip over public works replacement equipment. We're going to skip, skip over flood control designs, intersection sidewalk traffic lights. We're going to wait to talk with uh, Chris and Jen. Side and rear loading refuse and recycling trucks will wait. And so the goal is now with the remaining that uh, we, there's like six of them, we will talk with Jen and Chris on Tuesday night, it was December 17th. There'll be no meeting <coughs> Thursday. Okay. Thank In the meantime, you. we'll start preparing your stuff for the uh, your annual meeting. Excellent. Good. We're in good yeah. shape. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Pulliam. Other than the 17th, it looks like it usually happens. Not until January 14th. 14th. After the 17th. Yeah, we're going to be in good shape, I think. Um, okay. Old business, real quick. Uh, master plan. Um, Barbara and I are still attending the master plan meetings. We have one December 18th, uh, which we're going to finalize the Warren articles. Um, we continue to ask residents at home if you're watching and, and all the folks in this town visitors can take it too by the way the survey you go on the main website the uh, town the main page down the bottom it says take the survey it literally takes eight or nine minutes we need that information we're getting some a lot of good feedback cross sections all around town Barbara, is there anything you want to add on that um <coughs> there have been some uh submissions for the Consultants. Oh, the consulting, yes, the RFP, yep. So on the 18th, there should be presentation. That's correct, and that's going to be next Wednesday. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. And, and you should know that Barbara and Ann Connery behind the scenes, along with Jason Bashan, have done so much work in, in getting great information together. And Barbara is the uh, chairman of the Rockingham Planning Commission and also sits on the Hampton Beach Area Commission as well. Uh, Selectman's report, Mr. Bridal. Um, Pretty much already reported it. We've been working hard getting the uh, Warren articles out. There's still, like I said, there's still going to be some more yes. uh, when it comes to as soon as they get back to us with what's going on with the trash. And, and uh, we'll have right. those as soon as we get them. School board report, just a reminder, along with uh, Mr. Brown's report, so for the folks at home, the uh, public hearing and deliberative sessions this year will be at the new auditorium at Hampton Academy. So uh, Thursday night, January 16th, we will move both school and town budgets and warrant articles at the auditorium. Our deliberative session is Saturday, February 1st, the town <coughs> deliberative session at the Hampton Academy Auditorium. And then the following Tuesday, February 4th, in the evening at 7 o'clock, will be the Hampton School District. But more coming on that as we get forward. Mr. Ladd, the Hampton Village District Report. Well, we're kind of in a slow season. <laughs> <laughs> we have no major entertainment plan for the next few months, oh. <laughs> other than New Year's Eve. Fireworks, oh, that's that's right. Right. Fireworks right. New Year's Eve, yeah. yes. Or polar plunge. All right. Uh, anybody have any other new business? So we'll meet December 17th. No meeting this Thursday. Uh, for Bill Lowney and the Cable Group, we want to thank you very much. I'll have, have a motion to adjourn at yeah. Ms. Um, Kravis. Just a point of information. Go ahead. Uh, based on your wonderful updates, um, I would ask to change, uh, to amend the minutes to show that the deliberative session is the first, is that right, of February? Oh, is the front thing, is the first. It's February 1st, yes. Saturday, February 1st. And, if, and the good thing about SB2, especially in, in the ones we're in, 
because some have it in May. If it's if there's a snowstorm or whatever happens and it gets called off, it's the following Saturday because they they put they plug that into the calendar. We've had it had, had like what, five years ago, Russ. I think they changed it by a week. Accept um, a motion to move at 8:57 to adjourn. Moved by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? <coughs> aye. Thank you. Thank you, the viewers at home. Okay.